Hello, this is Jason Nash, and this clip on getting rid of that annoying SSL certificate warning is from my VMware vSphere Security Design training course. I hope you enjoy it. It's three vSphere hosts and the vCenter server, vCenter.nashlab.local, and we're going to replace these certificates on the vCenter box. So I'm not going to do the vSphere ones for this lab, but it's the same process, same, same, same thing to go through to generate the new certificates. So what I've got, uh, I'll also show you is, here are the original three files, the certificate, the private key, and the PFX file. And then I've got my backups here that I've already created. And I've also created a new SSL directory that's gonna hold the new files that we create. And on this system, I've installed uh, OpenSSL already. You can get that just by Googling it, OpenSSL in Windows. You only need the light version. There's two copies out there, the larger one and the small light. You just need the light. That'll do everything you need. So we'll go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is generate a new certificate request. We're going to generate a private key and a certificate request to go along with it. We'll submit that certificate request to our certificate authority. So I'm going to paste in the command so you don't have to watch me type it. OpenSSL.exe requesting a new certificate, creating a new private key, type is RSA if you remember from earlier, and the bit length could be 512 to 2048, so I'm doing 2048. Uh, we're outputting the key, the name is rui.key, so that'll be the private key. This looks like nodes, but it's not, it's no DES. Uh, we can encrypt the private key with DES encryption, but we're telling it not to. Days is how long you want the certificate to be valid, so we're doing 10 years. 10 times 365, and then outputting the certificate request with rui.csr. So as soon as I start this, it's going to start prompting me for information. And again, um, we could have it, you know, we could edit the config file and pre-populate this, but since I'm just doing one, this is easy enough. So the country name is a two-letter code. I'm in the United States, so it's U.S. You want the state, and this needs to be spelled out, not abbreviated. And if you can't tell already, I'm from North Carolina. City of Charlotte. Organizational name would be a company name, org name. For me, I'm using Nash Lab. And then an organizational unit name. So this is kind of a, you know, an internal name. And it's there's no wrong answer here. It's just information that shows up in the certificate file when someone looks at it. Could be IT, could be accounting, could be North America. I'm just going to do lab. And here's the important question. Common name. So it says your name. It's not really your name unless you're doing a personal certificate for things like email. For a host certificate, we use the host name. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, SSL is very dependent on DNS. So you need to make sure DNS is correct, and it's correct in for forward resolution and reverse resolution, and it's uniform. So when I go to a website, when I go to my bank's website, it takes a look at the URL I'm at, the certificate that the website gives me and make sure they match. If same thing here, if I change the name of my vCenter server, the certificate will break. Uh, the vSphere host will stop talking to it. So you need to make sure that you use the same names everywhere. So you can't have an alias on your system that you just type in VC and go to vCenter. Certificate's going to break and you're going to get that warning and wonder what's up. So make sure it's uniform naming across the organization. Then we have some optional things, a contact email in the certificate, so I'll put my email address. I'm not going to put a challenge password. You can do this when you, when you send in the certificate request. You can have a password, blank that, blank optional company name, and then that's it. So if you look, we've created three files, two of which we really care about. The first one, the .rnd, is a random number that was generated used to create our private key. Then we have our certificate request, the CSR, and finally our private key, this, the rui.key. So let's take a look at the request. These are text. They're in a little block format. It be, always begins begin certificate request, ends with end certificate request. So I'm going to copy this, jump over to our browser, and go to my certificate authority. So I mentioned that you could set up your own, and that's what I've done here. I've got Nash Lab CA. This is pretty simply a Windows 2003 server running IIS and the Windows Certificate Authority Services, and I've told it to be the Enterprise Root CA. So you can do this in your own lab. Uh, you can also go to VeriSign or someone like that. They do trial certificates. Downside is usually those trial certificates are uh, generated out of a different root 
And so the Windows machines don't don't trust that by default. So you have to download and import those manually, just like I'm, I, you would have to do when you generate your own. So, you know, if you don't want the hassle of setting up a Windows box and doing this, you can use VeriSigns. Just know that there's one more step uh, in the process. So we'll go to the web interface for this. Real quick, I'll show you how to import the root CA certificate. So let's say you just set this Windows system up, you connected to it, and now you need to import the root CA certificate. You need to do this on the vCenter boxes, any hosts that connect to it. Uh, if you had a large organization, you actually were going to use this, you would come up with an automated way, group policy, something like that. But for this, we could just do it manually. Uh, go back. So we want to download a CA certificate. Download the CA certificate again and tell IE to open it. It's going to launch the certificate store and we're going to say install. Next, it's going to say automatically select the certificate store. Don't do that or it's going to put it in your personal store, which is fine for you. Not good for service accounts or other people that use a vCenter box. So we'll say place them all in the following. Browse. And the one you want is Trusted Root Certification Authorities. Select that. Hit OK. Hit Next and Next. And now anything generated by my certificate authority will be trusted by this system. Simple enough. Go back to home. And now we're going to actually request a certificate using the, the request we generated. We're not doing a user certificate. We're doing a web certificate. And we need to do a submit a certificate request using base64. That's just the format it's in. And here we're going to paste in that text we copied. We're going to change this to a web server certificate and hit submit. And there we are. It's already done. So we want to change this to base64 again and download this certificate. I'm going to save it to my new SSL directory as rui.crt, I believe is the correct name for that. Yes, that's right. CRT. And done. So that wasn't very painful. Do a directory. And there's our files. If you remember, we need to have a PFX file as well. So we can easily generate that using what we already have. I'll paste this back in again. So SSL command PKCS12 is just the command we use to generate the PFX file, exporting it out. The PFX file again, if you remember, was a combination of your identity and a public key. So we're bringing in the certificate, we're bringing in the private key, giving it a name of RUI. The password here, test password, is not something I made up. That is, uh, you have to use this password. It's part of the Tomcat configuration for vCenter. And if you don't use this password, the certificates will not work. So password is test password, just like that. Output file is rui.pfx. And it's done. So there are the files we need. We'll jump over here and jump over here. And we'll just start copying these over. First is the CRT file. Replace. And then the private key. Oops. And the PFX. Place and replace. So that's it. So I'm going to close my VI client. Jump over here to server manager. To services. And I'm going to restart the vCenter server service and the web service. Which should all happen at once. Yep. It'll restart that for me. So give that a minute to restart. And then we'll reconnect again. It'll load the new certificates. Okay, services have restarted. So we're going to do a quick check first to make sure the certificate was loaded. So I'm going to go to the secure website of the vCenter server. So HTTPS, vCenter.nashlab.local. This is a good thing. I didn't get a certificate warning. Uh, I've got an OK lockbox here. So if we take a look, view certificate. Issue 2, vcenter.nashlab.local, issued by my CA. So that's good. If we look at details and then look at subject, here's all the information we entered when we generated the request. And if you look at the path, we see here that the CA, my CA, generated this certificate. So that's good. That means everything's working. So now we load the vSphere client. We log in. We won't get any sort of an SSL warning because, again, my system trusts the NASH Lab CA. 
Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.